Right, so we just had this come in. It's a Mercedes C43 AMG Estate. I bought it to sell it. I've not bought it to keep it. And I've actually got someone coming to look at it tomorrow. Be interesting to see if he buys it. But the way this video is going to plan out is I'm currently at Dunstable Downs. You're all very familiar with this place if you watch me regularly. And um, I'm going to work today. And on my way to work in the C43, I'm going to be, uh, I need to go get a wheel balance on the back of it because it's got a little bit of a wobble going on. And um, yeah, what we're going to do before we do that is we're going to go for a little walk around the outside of it, show you around the outside, look at the interior, go for a little drive, and then at the end of the video, we're going to do draggy times, all right? So it's going to be quite a cool video. Interesting to see what this is like. I think it's going to smash it with draggy times because it's four wheel drive. So um, let's get on it. Right, so literally, as this video went live, the competition for my meth-injected VW Golf R just went live as well on planetofdreams.co.uk. If you want to get involved with that competition, it's 25 quid an entry, there's 1,499 entries, but we're also doing an offer where if you buy five entries, you get them for 100 quid. So, if you want to get involved, it's planetofdreams.co.uk, head over there, answer the skill-based question, and you'll be in for a chance of winning the car. Let's get on with the video. C43 AMG. Now, one thing I would say that I felt when I first saw this car is it kind of doesn't really deserve the AMG badge visually. It is a very good looking car, don't get me wrong, but it does lack a bit of um, sort of road presence. It's a bit of a, it just looks like a C-Class Merc. I suppose it is just a C-Class, but I don't know, for something to have an AMG badge and rep it with a big engine under the bonnet, I just feel like, and even the C63s are the same, I just feel like it should have a bit more road presence. But all that aside, it is a bloody good looking car. We've got AMG wheels, AMG calipers. If you look on the uh, on the wing here, we've got a bi-turbo format badge. And them two things have a lot of meaning because under the bonnet, we've got a, a three litre six cylinder bi-turbo engine. And the formatic basically means that it's four wheel drive. So them two things combined are pretty special combination isn't they lots of power four wheel driven so i've got a strong feeling this is going to perform very well on draggy times now as you come around the back obviously it's an estate car which you know i've got an rs6 estate so i'm not going to knock the estate thing but if i was buying one of these for myself like i said i bought this as a bit of stock to sell if i was buying one of these for myself i think personally i'd rather a saloon because the saloon just it's got a bit of a sleeker look to it as you come around the back, um, we've got an AMG badge on the left there, and then over here we've got a C43 badge. Uh, again, the C43, like I say, is a, it's a new thing. It's not been about for a long time, and it does sit at a point in the market sort of below a C63 and above your general C-Class. Now, if I jump on the interior, this is where Mercedes are winning at the minute. It is beautiful inside. So this one's been specced with red leather, which I don't know the actual name, the color of the leather, but it's red through my eyes. Uh, but it's um, yeah, really nice place to be. And I think Mercedes are just winning in the car market at the minute with interiors. You know, like all this gloss black stuff. It's all just very high quality and very premium. And if, if you look at the later, like the newer Mercedes, they've got like virtual displays. There's just a lot more going on in the interior. And they've even made an improvement on the steering wheel. All these little buttons, even they feel nice. It all just feels quite premium and quality. You know, Mercedes have these these seat buttons to adjust the seats on the doors they've always had that but again they've just lifted the visuals of it the, the look of it and the feel as well just, just, it's all nice stuff but visually inside it is a beautiful place to be i think what i'm gonna do now is let me just jump in sit down that's better it's funny i was just filming and a guy um that subscribes to me on youtube just pulled up I was like calvin nice to meet you mate and he had an s3 i'll just quickly show you that clip we've got we've got a friend we've got a friend Are you all right yeah <laughs> Oh, is it? Good to meet you, man. Nah, nah, it's cool, man. I see your car. You're right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good to meet. You. What's your name? James. Good to meet you. Yeah. See you later, James. <laughs> yeah, 
nice car that. Um, so like I say, we're gonna jump in it now, go for a drive, uh, go quickly get this tire sorted at quick fit, and then I'm gonna head on my journey to work, and en route we're gonna do draggy times, all right? So let's get the engine started. Let me answer that phone call, and I'll see you in a bit. Right, we are off. Uh, just feel slight tremble as you, I thought we were doing 50 mile an hour, just a little bit of a tremble, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go get that sorted first, yeah? Um, it starts up in comfort mode, which, comfort mode, which is like my RS6, which is a bit annoying, because you get in it, you know, you start, it's all a bit underwhelming, isn't it? Even when you start the engine, the sound's really quiet, and it's just not too exciting, and you accelerate, and it's all a bit, it's all a bit calm and dull, which I suppose, the majority of people that are gonna buy this car are just gonna drive it and use it as a daily run around and have the power there as a privilege as and when they <clears throat> as and when they need it. So it kind of makes sense. But for people like me that just want to get in it and cane the ass out of it, um, we wanna go into Sport Plus. Do you know what? Let me go get the tires sorted and then we'll jump back on and go for a drive after that's sorted, yeah? Quick fit in Dunstable. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. Wait, that'll do. That'll do. Right, I'll see you in a bit. Turns out it uh, needs a new wheel because it's got a horrible buckle on it. So yeah, I'm gonna have to show it to the guy tomorrow, explain to him that it needs a new wheel, get a new wheel, and then he can pick it up a week later. That's if he even bloody turns up, and if he does turn up, if he wants to buy it as well. So there's a lot of if, but some maybes there. So video, that's why you're here. You want to see what this car drives like, and you want to see draggy times in it. So let's get back on the road. So let's talk about Mercedes as a brand quickly, because there was a time in my life where I weren't too interested in Mercedes. I don't, I don't know what it was, I was just like, you know what, yeah, it's nice and that, but I just weren't too excited about it. I think maybe like the era of the old C63, like the naturally aspirated V8 one, uh, sounded unbelievably good, but the, just the quality of the interior now just didn't rate that car much at all. Obviously later on they facelifted them and then they had like the Black Series, that was an amazing car. But I think at that stage, yeah, this is quick. Uh, at that stage in time, they weren't too impressive. And the new era of Mercedes, they're really up their game. The interior is the next level. They look a lot better. I know I, I criticised the look of this uh, look of this car a little bit, but um, it's still a bloody, it's a good looking car. It is a good looking car. It could just do with a bit more stance, a bit more presence, I believe. Let me know what you think to that, by the way. Um, but yeah, so, one thing that, like, this car, I've mentioned it before, this is a car that's on my bucket list, and I think w one thing on my channel is, obviously I've bought this to sell it, and I don't intend on keeping it, but from my point of view, there isn't really much difference, it just means that I'm not gonna keep it for as long as I'd keep my own car. And a, a C43 AMG is a car that I've wanted, and the simple reason is because of the boxes it ticks. It is a V6, by turbo three litre engine it's got four wheel drive and my rs6 one of the downfalls of my rs6 is the weight of it and you really feel it for like as you drive it it feels like a a big heavy car and power to weight ratios are obviously affected with weight massively you can have the biggest engine on planet earth but if it weighs 15 tons it ain't gonna move and so in my head I've been thinking, well maybe I should go for a lighter car and maybe something that's um, a slight, a more of a match power to weight ratio but one with a bit more potential. And I've been looking at these because an M3, right? An M3 is a, a freely a six cylinder engine, by turbo as well, and it's rear wheel drive. So as a draggy car, not a great draggy car because power goes through the rear wheels, the wheels slip, and you can't get much of the traction down to the road. So you do really want it to be four-wheel drive. So I'm really interested to see what the new M3 is gonna be like, because they are apparently four-wheel drive. And um, I've been looking at A45 AMGs. Again, another car that's on my bucket list. It's, uh, it ticks a lot of boxes. 
but it is just a two litre four cylinder engine so you kind of lose that displacement that engine size which gives you the mid range and the tuning potential that is required with achieving good draggy times and not said I'm some big draggy guy but you know I want to uh, performance is everything and performance doesn't necessarily come from bigger cars because bigger cars are generally heavier point I'm getting to anyway so this car I can see that it, mu it must have massive tuning capabilities the fact that it, is, it does have two turbos I think uh, running at 360 brakes stock uh, is, is impressive but the f I think you could get so much more power out of this car and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm really drawn to buying one owning it and tuning it and seeing what it's like not say I am going to do that don't take this uh, as like gospel but it's something that's been really playing in my mind and when this came in I was like do you know what oh, I'm really interested in that car delivery of this car let's talk about that it it's a quick car it is a very quick car but with every car with a turbo every time I drive one I think I just feel like every single one of them should be tuned I just I could never own a car with a turbo and not at least go to stage one on it because you can just feel that it's it's suffering it's holding power there's traffic here how annoying this just this just isn't going to plan today. I want to drive the car. I want to show everyone how well this car drives, but I can't because I'm going to go this way then. I'm going to go back to where I started from and, and not sit in traffic because I really want to show everyone how this car drives. But it is quick. Yeah, so it, 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 every car just feels like it should have... Um, there's a, there's a beast within every car that needs to be unleashed and this has definitely got that and I think uh, the thing that uh, is has made me so drawn to these cars is the tuning potential now I'm not too sure how strong the internals are on these cars but you know Ricky for example he's got his M3 is a, a same size engine with two turbos he's got his car running at over 700 brake horsepower and if I'm not saying that is achievable this probably not because it's not the top of the range AMG they're probably held back on places within the engine but if this could run at anywhere near sort of 600 plus or close to 700 bhp it would be an amazing car because the way that you can't really feel it so much now because we're quite high up in this speed range but through bends and that the way that the power is delivered through the wheels is perfect my GTR was the same I remember driving my GTR and you could you could almost step the back end out but with confidence because the front wheels would would save you literally you could floor it around a bend and the front wheels would just give a bit of traction and it would pull you around the bend nice nicely and that's exactly what this how this car is set up so it ticks a hell of a lot of boxes it's beautiful to look at inside quite good looking outside um, like I said, I believe that it could look a little bit better on the outside, but I think if you're about to buy one of these cars, something it does offer is good value for money. Right now they start at about £30,000, and if you are if you just want to daily drive it and enjoy it, you can do that, but if you're considering tuning it, I think the potential of this car is huge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head off to my little private road where I do draggy times and we're going to see how quickly we can get this thing to 60 all right three two one that's better that's good that felt quick uh, so what I'll do as ever I'll do multiple runs and I'll check back with you in a second I think where do I think it will fall I hope it's not quicker than my M135i, um, so, but we'll see. But I reckon it will be quicker than the M2, because the M2 was a real driver and it struggled like for traction. So I'll check back with you in a sec, all right? Right, the draggy times. It, um, it was easy, you know, four wheel drive car with this type of gearbox. And by the way, it's a nine speed gearbox and it is, on point this gearbox it's so good 
it, even the way it kicks into gear for every gear change, it's just so good. It's so on point. So I really, I do rate the gearbox in this car massively. Um, but draggy time. So get straight to the point. It done naught to 60 in 4.69 seconds. And I just had a quick look. They quote 4.8 seconds to 60. So I got it quicker to 60 than the time quoted uh, by Mercedes themselves, which is quite impressive. But I reckon they do that to kind of make the C63 look like a more attractive option to those that want um, a high performance car. But uh, so yeah, performance wise, naught to 60, bloody good. Let's talk about the pros and cons. Am I in the right place? Yeah, binker, binker. Oh yeah, did it. <laughs> don't even know where I work. Uh, pros and cons. I think the only thing that I I say dislike or or I don't love about this car is the fact that it's an estate car. And you're probably thinking, Calvin, you you own an estate car yourself. But I've got something to say about that. I think the only car or the only sports car on the road that pulls off being an estate is an RS car, like an RS4, an RS6. Um, and you're probably thinking, you, you're gonna say that because you own one. And I think a lot of people would agree with me on that factor. But that, that, with that in mind, or, or saying that, shall I say, um, this car does serve a bloody good purpose for a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there that want a, a high performance car, uh, that want an estate car, you know, to put a dog in the back and whatever else. So it does tick them boxes. So if anything, it's a positive, but visually it just doesn't look quite so good, I don't think. Um, but all the pluses with this car, the gearbox, like I say, is amazing. Turning circle in Mercedes is proper good. I love the way that they've got a good lock on them. Uh, the gear stick, strangely, like you wouldn't think that would ever be natural to have your gear stick on the steering column there. Uh, somehow they've managed to put the the indicators and the wiper and everything all on one, all on one, uh, what's the word? What are they called? I even think, stick stick that's not what they're called is it um, um, um what's it called we are... stalk all on one stalk impressive i'm gonna end it here and get to work because i've just just like well, took ages to get to work there i've just haircut mcdonald's video had to sort this tire situation out it's been a bit of a drama but yeah i'm uh, i'm gonna end this video here thank you very much for watching if you like this video hit like if you're new hit subscribe and i'll see you in my next video all right bye in the next episode of diary of a car trader probably not the best car to drive in the rain an e92 bmw m3